Welcome back. I played an exhausting rapid game on Lee Chess last night, and I thought we were about even until close to the very end, but it turns out when I looked at the evaluation, as you can see on your screen, it jumps up and down all over the place. The five red dots that you see on your screen are five blunders that I had. I also had four mistakes that aren't shown here. The green dot over toward the right is where I realized that I might be able to pull this off. So I'm just going to go through and look at my worst mistakes and blunders and try to figure out what I should have done instead. I had no idea that I was ahead most of the game. Let's switch over to, this is the position at which I concocted the plan that eventually led to me winning the game. I did not yet know that I was winning here. I wasn't sure what my opponent was going to do with those two rooks or that bishop, but my plan that I came up with was to move this knight around the board, and uh, let's see, exactly where did I go with it? I think I went there, and then there, after that pawn had moved forward, and then there, and there, and there, that's with the knight, and my rook went to there, and there. Yes, I actually concocted this plan. You can see from your clock on the screen that I had less than one minute remaining at this point. But I recognized this position over here from a puzzle that I had solved a few months ago. The pawn is guarding this spot. I have a knight. My opponent doesn't. I could put that knight right there. And my rook is keeping the king from getting out right now. And that's where I started this plan. But I, again, I didn't know exactly what my opponent was going to do. They brought that rook up there, which kind of helped with my plan because I was going to put the knight here anyway. But first I wanted to move that pawn so that they couldn't move this pawn. I thought if they moved that pawn, then I would be able to take their rook. So it kind of pins this pawn. My other pawn is still protected. Okay, they moved the king up, which that gave me encouragement for my plan. Because their king can't get out this way because of the pawn. And that's where I wanted to put my knight right there. So I did the first step of the plan. This attacks the rook, which I thought might win me this pawn. Or the rook, depending on what my opponent did. But they still had three minutes left. They dropped that rook back. So I went on with my plan. It's attacking the pawn, but I don't care if they move the pawn because again, I just want to bring my knight around. They did move the pawn. I did bring my knight. They moved that rook over there and I'm not sure exactly why. Again, you see the eval bar shows that I have a huge advantage here, but I did not know that during the game. Well, they got that rook out of the way. So instead of going on with my knight plan just for a second, I decided why not move that pawn one step closer toward promotion because that's one of my main strengths in this position. I'm up two pawns. That's this pawn and one of these. They brought that over, so now they have two attackers on it. Now I have two defenders on it, but I gotta move one of them because I wanna get my knight over there. And about right here is when I thought I might actually be winning. I thought, if I go ahead with my plan, which again intends to get the knight down there so it can hop up here, at this point they'll realize they have two attackers on that pawn and I only have one, and they'll take it. But I only have 36 seconds left and I'm reconstructing this thought process a day later. Who knows what I actually thought in those few seconds that I had here. If they took it, I could take with my rook, and then I assumed they would take back. Then I would put my knight there and that would be check and also win that rook. That's what I thought. So I moved my knight. They did take the pawn. I did take. Well, here my opponent hesitated, and I guess they saw that if they took here, I would win their rook. So they didn't take. They just moved that way. Well, the, the evaluation here says I have a plus 55. If I will play knight to b5 check, and the bishop would be forced to take, and I would take. But see, that didn't look that good to me because I'd already concocted my plan. Also, I still only have 30, 31 seconds left. So that tells you that the last few moves I've made in about a second or less each. I put the knight down there as I had planned. The king had to come down because it couldn't come out because the pawn's guarding b6. Then I put the knight where I wanted it. And here, I believe the only way they can get out of it is by, is by putting the rook on c6 because that prevents my rook from coming down. But if they do that, if they put their rook on c6, I'll just take it. They'll take with their pawn and then I'll start bringing my king to get rid of this pawn. I'm not sure how that would have worked out. Fortunately, my opponent put their rook on d6 which doesn't help anything. And my plan did work here. I have 26 seconds left on the clock and my opponent doesn't have a choice. And I checkmated it in the corner as I had said uh, that I would at the beginning of the plan. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you that story because I was pretty proud of that knight hopping all the way from the H file over to the B file, kind of zigzagging across the board, stopping just in case it needed to fork the, the rooks there, the rook and the king, but then going ahead with the checkmate plan. And all because I recognized this corner position from a puzzle. Okay, I'm going to go back and look at my blunders. And I think a couple of the ones that I'm going to check are actually going to be mistakes rather than blunders. Let's go back to the beginning of the game. I'm not going to do the thing because I can't on Lee Chess. I'm not going to do the thing where I try to wait for the evaluation bar to jump because I've already seen the graph. And on Lee Chess, there's no way to get rid of the, the evaluations over there in the in the move list it tells you which moves were wrong and and what you should have played instead so anyway apparently i was ahead from the get-go 
right here on move three, I already have a plus one advantage and plus 1.4 right there. And then just a couple of moves later, I'm up plus 3.6. I had no idea that that was the case. My opponent hit, by this point has already made a couple of mistakes and I have no idea that I'm up that so high. Apparently it's because I can check here, but wait, I thought about that, but wouldn't, because the F pawn had moved. I thought I could check, but wouldn't they, wouldn't they just play the, the pawn or put the bishop in there? It says that they would, but yeah, plus 3.8 if I check now. They will block with the pawn. Okay. I mean, with the bishop. Well, then what would I do? Oh, it says then I would swing over here and check. But then wouldn't they block with the pawn? Oh, okay. Stockfish is really sneaky. I might someday see these moves. Knowing that I'm going to be blocked one way or the other over here like this. And then swinging over here to check in order to target their B pawn to win the rook. But I wouldn't even win the rook at that point because they would move the knight. Uh, if I start playing like that very soon, uh, you might might need to check the, the game evaluation. But it didn't count me as a mistake for missing that huge tactic. I'm still up plus two, plus three at this point. My first mistake doesn't come until much later, um, right here, after my opponent has moved this rook over. And again, I've been up this whole time and didn't realize it. I thought we were very even. Nobody's up on material. And what I played was queen to e2. Okay, I think what I was, I'm trying to remember here, but I think what I was aiming for at that point was to move over to this dark square diagonal to try to infiltrate here. But that's too slow, isn't it? I can see uh, why that's a problem. I can't get directly to that diagonal because the, the queen is guarding that square. So my thought was to get to the diagonal this way and then try to get in behind that king. But that doesn't make a lot of sense to take one, two moves just to get in position to threaten that. And then they could stop it by pushing a pawn. So that seems bad, but what should I have done? Stockfish says I should have played knight to a4 is the only move that maintains my advantage in this position. I guess I see that if I am going to try to get my queen here and they do try to block with the pawn, like I just said, the knight's out of the way of this rook, which is pointed right through here. So that pawn would be pinned, their c pawn. So if I had my knight on a4 and it eventually got my queen on that dark square diagonal, it would be pointless for them to block with the pawn because I could just go ahead and take that pawn. Or for that matter, I could take it with the knight at that point, which would be a check, and that and their their c pawn would still be pinned. But but assuming that they don't give me time to get over on that diagonal, what does knight to a4 do? And it says at that point they would play knight to h6. Oh, and then I would oh, I don't even have to move my queen. Okay, I got it now. The reason this is good is because I can check there now without getting my queen on the dark square diagonal because that pawn is pinned. But once I did that, wouldn't they just move over? And then what would I do? I said, then I would then I would come back here and threaten their queen. But that seems like an empty threat, especially since this pawn is undefended, my B pawn. I know that's a lot of lines, but I don't know if I'm going to count that as a blunder for myself. Obviously, Stockfish is the ultimate arbiter here. It's, it's the highest arbiter that we can get in these games. But, but I think for me, for myself, I can't count that as a blunder. I can't count that as myself because it's such a complex line that Stockfish is seeing here that gives me such a high advantage. I, I'm not going to feel bad about that one. But I think I, I do understand the concept that it puts my opponent on the run. My rook pins this pawn. I would be able to check there. I would be able to come back and threaten their queen. But I don't know what I would do if they went and took my b-pawn at that point. Or if I want them to take my b-pawn for some reason. Oh no, they couldn't take my b-pawn. Okay. From here, the knight would be guarding the b-pawn. Well, based on the journey with the knight that I made at the end of the game, maybe I should have seen this. Okay, but I didn't. I played this. Takes away my advantage. My opponent blundered at that point, which gives me a much larger advantage, and apparently I played one of my better moves. Don't ask me why I abandoned my plan here. I think what the problem with, with my original plan, I said I, I planned to get over here on the dark square diagonal. Since they had moved that rook up, it looked like they were going to be able to guard some of these squares, and maybe now they're planning on getting their other rook in the game too. But I decided my rook's already here, lined up with the king. Why not put my queen right in front of it? Then I can move that knight wherever I want, like like that, which would be a threat on the rook and, and be lining up mate at that point. Although if they moved the rook, then their queen would be protecting against mate. But anyway, that's what I played, and it wasn't bad. Apparently it was among my best moves. I have a plus three. My opponent plays a slight inaccuracy, which was a check. I, was I supposed to just move over? Okay, well, that's what I did. Now, this next uh, next move was not horrible on my opponent's part. They're getting out of the way of this, I guess. And my next move is counted as a blunder. Okay, what did I play here? I played knight to e2. Okay, well, that seemed like a an obvious threat on the queen. What should I have done instead? Should I, should I have gone there or... Yeah, I, I probably should have gone there. No, wait, they would have just taken it. But if they took it, I would get this. 
Is that what it was? No, it was knight to a4 again. Plus six, if I play knight to a4, which looks like it's just giving up a knight. Let's do, let's try this variation. It looks like they can just take it. But but if they take it again, I have this. So let's just say their best move, Stockfish says, is to move the king in the corner. But let's say they took it. Then, okay. Oh, my queen's guarding that square. Oh, I need a lot of work. Knight to a4 is completely safe. What's it aiming at? It's just getting out of the way of this, right? And it's completely safe there. And if I need to leave it at some point, I can protect it with the pawn. And their best move is just to move the king to the corner. And then I would put my queen here, I guess, getting it out of the way of the rook. And it does say that eventually I, I would want to capture here with my rook. Okay. But I don't want to capture there with my queen for some reason. All right. But that's what I should have played. But I blundered away a little bit of my advantage with this empty threat on the queen. They dropped the queen back. Okay, now here I did play my best move. This bishop's undefended. It might as well attack it. And then I have a nice, a nice outpost there for my knight. Um, also, this pawn, their h5 pawn, I'm now pointed at twice. I think that was my reasoning for putting it there. And apparently Stockfish agreed with me. They played their best move, which was to uh, guard that spot and continue guarding that pawn, which they are also protecting twice. Okay, now I'm supposed to... Stockfish is still jumping around here, but I blundered here too. I went ahead and went there. That apparently was... I guess that's bad because I lose a pawn, don't I? They can take, and when I take back, they get the pawn. I guess that's the uh, guess that's the downside of moving in there. Okay, what I should have done is this. I'm not entirely sure what that does. I, I guess it hits that pawn. Was the idea to take that pawn, and then when they took back, I could put my queen there, but then that would just force a queen train because their queen would be pinned to their king at that point, and then I would end up with doubled pawns. I'm not sure what this does. Bishop to e2. Or h3 would have been almost as good. I guess that prevents that pawn from getting much closer. Or knight to d3. Probably because it wants me to get my knight over back over to h4. <laughs> okay. But I brought but I put the knight in there like I had said I wouldn't. It says they're supposed to take it, but they didn't. They actually this is one of the two places in the entire game that my opponent had a very slight advantage, and here it's 0 0.9 with Stockfish still running, 0 0.8 minus. They should have taken it and I would have taken back, right? And then they would have gotten that pawn that I talked about. My opponent would have been a pawn up at that point. But instead, they put it back over here. Now, I'm not sure. I can't explain what they were thinking there. Now, here's a long downslope in my evaluation. Right now, I'm at plus four. And none of the next three or four moves are counted as mistakes or blunders. But I somehow take this plus four all the way back down to zero in three or four moves with a series of inaccuracies. What Stockfish wants here is to bring my other rook to the center. I guess because that pawn is in danger of moving and it wants me to contest this file, I don't know for sure. But I instead took that pawn. And that takes us, that halves my advantage from plus four to plus two. I thought it was pretty smart because it's not sacrificing a knight, right? I could have left it here, which obviously is what Stockfish wanted me to do. Or wait, my second best move maintains plus four is to put the knight here which kind of gets in the way of my king and queen. But I, I thought this was pretty smart. I go up a pawn. This is the first place that either one of us has, was really up on material because I knew they wouldn't take because I have this battery lined up and then I could just go back. But that turns out to take away half my advantage. My opponent played their best move, which was getting out of the way of this rook. Okay, they should have done that a while back, but they didn't. Now, it wants me to put the knight back where it was, but instead I went over there. Who knows why I did that? I can't explain that. I know it doesn't give up the knight because the knight's still protected. I guess I thought here that, that their queen was the main impediment to my attack, but instead my queen was my main weapon in my attack, and I shouldn't have traded it off here. It says that took away most of my advantage, and they should have just taken, but they didn't. They came over there to attack the knight, and now it wants me to go here to attack the bishop. I mean, I, that kind of lines up with the king and the rook too, so that's a little sneaky, but it would be an attack on the bishop, and it says they would drop the bishop back at that point, and then... And then I would check over there. That's what it says. That would maintain a plus one. If I put my queen here, they drop their bishop back. And then I checked. Oh, because I would win the rook. Am I following Stockfish's line? Stockfish's line says their queen would take there. I don't know about all that. But anyway, that's what it says. Well, I didn't do that. I, I just went ahead and traded the queen off. Okay. Well, I did play my best move here, which was getting the knight out of danger. This pawn is undefended, so they can get the pawn back that I just took over there. Oh, or they can take my rook. That's the Stockfish's top two recommended moves here for them. But we are back at even, even though none of those moves of mine were counted as blunders or mistakes. They were all inaccuracies. Took me from plus four down to zero. My opponent didn't play one of their better moves. Okay, my next move is a mistake. Stockfish wants me to protect this pawn. Well, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because I do remember thinking, oh, this pawn is undefended. I guess at this point, I thought it wasn't that important. And I'm not sure why. 
But what I did see was now that earlier when their knight was still back on its home square and their rook was still on its home square, both their rook and their bishop were defending this pawn. But now only the bishop is. That's what I saw, and I played this, but that's a mistake and takes us back to zero. But I, I saw that I could take this pawn. We would trade off a piece, and I would take the pawn. Now again, my opponent is supposed to take this pawn, and again, they missed it. They thought I was attacking their bishop, which is a little silly because their rook was protecting their bishop. I wasn't trying to trade off for the bishop. I was going after this pawn. Well, here I suddenly saw that it might be important for me to have my B pawn, so I saved it. My next mistake and or blunder is several moves away. Let's just move on to that. I maintained about a plus four advantage through the next few moves. It slipped a little here. I'm at plus two and a half. Plus, no, it's rising. Plus three and a half. Okay. Now I played knight to f5 here. Why? Why did I play knight to f5? Because that, that loses me a pawn. I had just been talking about gaining a pawn over here, but now, and I, and I am up two pawns now, by the way, but that would, that would lose me a pawn. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Maybe if we did this and they took, and I took, and they took, then I would get their bishop and that pawn. Maybe that's what I was thinking. Still had four minutes left at this point. That's what I played. What does Stockfish wants me to move my king over or move my rook over or move my rook up? Those are the three moves that maintain plus three and a half for me. I will say that I do not understand either of the two rook moves. I know that the bishop can't get a uh, point at those squares just right now because I just played this pawn move, but what if they did that? And then their bishop could point there. And if I put my rook on one of those two squares that Stockfish wants it on, I'd be in trouble. Okay, I think I understand getting my king off the light square. If I don't have another good move, I have been, I have heard this and I don't remember where. If you don't have another good move and it looks like any of your piece moves will maybe weaken your position, one move is it's not just a waiting move. Uh, it's getting the king off of the light square because they have a light squared bishop. I don't know how valuable that is. Those of you that are higher ranked than me, higher rated than me, or more experienced than me can explain whether or not that's what that's about. But I, it seems like I remember hearing that somewhere, that instead of weakening my position, all my pieces are protected here. Everything is holding together. It's all, you know, these two protect each other. Everything is tied together. That's the only piece that's not protected in my position. And I don't know what I can do about it. But getting my king off the same color complex as the bishop and not weakening anything else in the process. Maybe that's what that was about. But I don't understand it. I played knight to f5, as I said. That's a blunder. Takes away all my advantage. And my opponent was supposed to take it, but they didn't. They ran away. So this is one of those rare opponents at my level that doesn't like to trade pieces. Most of the opponents at my level are far more trade happy than I am. I try to only trade when it's beneficial to me. I try to only trade when it would weaken their position or strengthen my position in some way. Like if it doubles their pawns, or if it undoubles my pawns, or if the position is locked with lots of pawns and I trade a, uh, one of my bishops for one of their knights, and then I have an extra knight that can hop through the locked pawns where their bishop can't get through. That kind of thing. But this opponent, as unlike most of the opponents that I've played, they seem to run from every thing that looked like an even trade. Oh, I've joked about this in a couple of recent videos. The computer wants me to play h4 here. That's my best move. It maintains plus four. Yeah, I never would have guessed that, but I never will guess when the computer wants me to play h4, especially after my king's castled behind it. But that's what it wants here, h4. Okay, I'll grant you this. My h pawn is, a cur is currently a passed pawn. That makes sense. There's no pawns between it and the goal, and there's no pawns on the adjacent file to stop it. But I don't have any, like, I mean, right there, I guess it would be protected by the knight. And then on its next square, it would be protected by the bishop. And then on its next square, it would be protected by the knight. So it can get all the way to there. Wait, wouldn't they just move their rook over to stop that, though? Probably. Um, and I'm stopping their little pawn here. Maybe that's, maybe that's what h4 is about, is the fact that I can get it all the way to there protected. But that's what I should have played. But instead, I, I came over here. That was just an inaccuracy. Okay, I'm going to skip to the point of my next blunder because I don't want to make this video any much, uh, very much longer. I did maintain an advantage, again, not knowing it here. I'm at plus one, plus two, plus three around here. And I told you about the part where I started moving, moving the knight across there, but this isn't that part yet, I don't think. Yeah, because I brought the knight back. Okay, now here I'm up plus three and a half again, and I blundered. What should I have done? Computer wants me to play rook to c3. What does that do? Oh, it, prote it, it protects the knight? I guess, uh, I guess the stockfish is seeing this. I was seeing this too. But now I'm down under two minutes. I'm at a minute and a half here or so. Maybe they were also seeing that this gets separated. But see, I wasn't worried about the, my G pawn getting separated from the H pawn because that would put it in front of their pawn and it would, it would make these two pawns friends because the G pawn right now can't go anywhere because of their F pawn. But if it got here, it could maybe support its friend, the E pawn. 
because my G pawn wanted to be an F pawn, right? Because it could help the E pawn there. Pawns in the center are the more popular ones, right? It didn't want to hang out with this, this crowd over here on, on the outside file. And, and it would block that guy. It would, it would be doing something important there if they traded. But, not the, but Stockfish wants me to do this, I guess, to protect that? I don't know. That's what it says. And I could have maintained half my advantage by moving my bishop up one. I mean, my, my rook up one here to e2. Not sure what that would have done. I would have maintained plus 1.7 by moving this rook over here to g1. I, I can't explain any of those. I have no idea what those moves do. But I push this pawn. That gives my opponent the only, the only advantage they had all game that was greater than minus 1. This is minus 1.7. The only time. And that's if they play rook e to g7. And it says if they did that, then I would play over here and double my rooks on the c file. And then they would capture here, which would not be check. And then I would check them down here. Oh, to force this trade so that I could then get this rook? Wait, that would get all our rooks off the board immediately. But that's what the computer says. It says they would go here. I would go there. They would attack here. I would check there. They would take. I assume then, then that I would take there because the line doesn't fit on the screen anymore. They would have to take there and then I would take here and all the rooks would be gone and I would be up two pawns. Well, then why would my opponent have an advantage after that? I would be up two pawns. What would they... Oh, they would... They would be... They would have a passed pawn right there that my king couldn't get to. That's why. That's why they would have an advantage. And their king would be able to get to my passed pawn, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. They would be able to catch my passed pawn, but I wouldn't be able to catch theirs. Oh my. I, I don't know if all those geometric shapes on the screen mean anything to you now after I drew them all, but, but I think it makes sense to me that the reason this is a mistake is because after four or five moves later, my opponent's going to have a passed pawn that I can't catch. But wait, I would be able to catch it, wouldn't I? Oh no, because they would still have the bishop guarding the promotion square. That's why that was a blunder. Okay. But my opponent didn't notice that that was a blunder and that they should have played this. They, they did that instead. I, I don't know what that does. And that's when I'm supposed to... Oh, I'm not even supposed to take that? Oh, Stockfish says just move it up one. Well, if I'd moved it up one, I never could have gotten my knight there later. Okay, well, I'm glad I took it then. And uh, they should not have taken back. They should have gone right here, back to where they were. It, it doesn't matter, though, because I'm up plus three. They took that pawn, and my knight went over there. And that's where I started the video pretty close to this with the knight over there. Yeah, I think that's where I started this video with my plan suddenly getting back into my head that I needed to come back across there. I don't know... I guess the reason I went there was because the pawn was temporarily undefended, but then they defended it, so I eventually came up on that plan of trying to get my knight over here and checkmating in the corner, which did work. But again, I think I understand some of these blunders, but not all of the suggested moves, some of them. Those of you who watched through the video and saw the parts that I didn't understand, feel free to leave comments. Thank you for spending your time here. I'm glad I won this game. It made me feel better. It's only my second win on Lee Chess in over 12 games. I didn't continue counting. But in over 12 games, I lost almost all of those. And I, I think I drew one. I had one draw in there someplace. And one, one win where somebody resigned early. So this was my first real win that I worked my way all the way through the game. And we got into the 50s. I think move 57 is where I won with under a minute left. So it's very tense and exhausting. But it made me feel better. And, and hopefully we're learning something. Hopefully we're all getting better. I'll see you next time.